Hello again, I hope everyone's keeping well. Let's get straight into it, carrying on from where we left off last week. You did watch last week's video? No? Ah, okay, fine. Anyway, welcome to the services series, where we look at the different types of services that are in the community pharmacy contract. We said there are four main categories of services provided, of which three are part of the NHS contract. To start with, we're going to look at some of the essential ones, the ones that all pharmacies have to do. But before that, I want you to take a good look at this here block of cheese. Yes, this cheese is a metaphor for having good systems in place and I always want you to think back to this here piece of cheese, okay? Okay, we'll go on. Now let's start with one of these big essential services, shall we? Dispensing. This is what's often thought of as taking ages to just stick a label on a box. I mean, how hard can it be? And why on earth does it take so long? The service description is, the supply of medicines and appliances ordered on NHS prescriptions together with information and advice to enable safe and effective use by patients and carers and maintenance of appropriate records. Now that's certainly a mouthful. There's a technicality here for the appliances part. It's an essential service, but it's not always done as it depends if a pharmacy tends to dispense it in its normal course of business. Maybe more about that on another day. You may have come across something that looks like my masterpiece. This one, in your hand. This is an NHS prescription. Note the slight differences in the prescriptions between England and Wales. It's a set of instructions, it's a legal document, and it's also an invoice. There are four types of checks that those lovely staff at the pharmacy need to make sure is okay. Number one, legal checks. Prescriptions should have a date on them. After a period of time, they expire. And when that happens, depends on what type of medicine it is. If they are future dated as well, the pharmacy can prepare it, but they can't give it out before that date. There's also the prescriber, that's the person that wrote the prescription, it's not always a doctor. Their details and signature need to be on there too. For children under 12, the age needs to be on there. Number two, professional or clinical checks. So you just brought in a prescription for a medicine. Is it okay with some of the medicines, creams, ointments, herbal remedies, eye drops, nose drops, ear drops that you already take? Is it appropriate for you with your medical conditions or allergies? What about how you take it? Is it clear for the pharmacy what the prescriber has intended? And more importantly, is it safe? Number three, accuracy checks. So the pharmacy have the medicine, stuck some sort of label on it, so what are they doing now? Well, seeing that what they have just supplied you matches that green piece of paper you handed in. No, in England this is sometimes sent electronically, so it isn't always on paper. But again, maybe we'll leave that for another time too. Number four, financial checks. So this might be less noted, but it's important. There are some items that have particular requirements in order to be given on the NHS. These might be missed on the prescription, and although the prescriber may legally be allowed to prescribe the item, the pharmacy won't get paid for it if certain amendments aren't made. Also, for English prescriptions, and for Welsh prescriptions in England, there need to be other checks relating to whether you pay for your prescription, and the situations in which you don't. Phew! Now, all these only explain some of the considerations and checks that are made, not the processes of getting the medicine label, ordering items that aren't in, ensuring adequate record keeping, and so on. These may vary slightly, depending on the pharmacy, although some specifics between them will be the same. For instance, the legal requirements of what's put on the label or the boxes you receive with each medicine. Then, where necessary, on handout, Key information can be provided by a member of the team relating to the medicines or other necessary information to pass on to you, such as how to best take the medicine, what to avoid while taking the medicine, or what sort of effects you experience while taking it. 
Remember, this is often done with hundreds to thousands of medicines per day. And this isn't all the pharmacy team are doing. They're answering phones, or giving advice, or maybe providing the other services that we'll be covering on this channel. Ah, yes, the big block of cheese. This is based on the Swiss cheese model of errors. I like to adapt this model to think about all systems processes. Now let's look at each block of cheese as a process. Each hole is a gap in that process. Now imagine there are rats that are trying to get through this cheese. We don't want the rats to get through because bad things will happen. So the pharmacy has responsibilities in how we design these cheese layers to try to minimize the rat getting through. Some of the holes in that cheese are deficiencies in our systems or processes. This can be, for example, having a process in place where mistakes are more likely. Other than the procedures themselves, sometimes adverse conditions can also allow these rats to pass through. This could be, for example, being under severe pressure or having less staff. So even though the cheese or process was otherwise designed well enough, it was the adverse condition there that allowed the rat to pass through. Errors are a complicated issue that we'll hopefully look into as well in the future. But the idea is that all that time spent is trying to make sure the initial cheese block of receiving your prescription, all the way through to that final cheese block of you receiving it, have as few holes as possible to try to stop the rats, or in other words, any potential errors, from getting through. And that, briefly, is why your medication can sometimes take a while. Again, many thanks for watching. Appreciate it if you could like, share, subscribe, all that jazz, that would be fantastic. Uh, please join us next week where we'll again be continuing the services series and looking at another essential services. So hopefully I'll see you next week.